So obviously we've modeled one wheel. We don't want to model another. We just want to mirror it over. So I'm going to take this R wheel. And when we want to mirror, it's important to first establish where the center of our model is. And we should have been modeling right on the middle of, say, the x-axis. So looking at our center point, we've set up our drawing so that these wheels are evenly spaced between zero. Um, so now I should just take this wheel. I have the whole group selected. But I want to maintain that pivot. For, for animation's sake, I want to be able to rotate this thing on its own. So to mirror it, I'm going to first group it by hitting Command-G. We're going to call it the R wheel MIR for mirror. Okay. I'll duplicate. I know that's because R wheel mirror already exists. It gave me R wheel mirror 1. So I change that to L for the left wheel. That will allow me to keep it at the one. And because this pivot is right at the origin, whenever you make a new group, it will do that. So I'll just hit negative one on the X. And my wheel goes over there. Same thing for these panels here. Our plank group. I want to keep that pivot there for if I want to make any adjustments to it. So I'll group it. Call that our plank group. Instead of group, we'll call it. Sorry. Yeah. Copy, paste, call that M I R. Scale that one to negative one. Wait a minute. Got duplicated. P R L. And negative one. And now it's over there. So, you know. At this point, you kind of say, well, gee, that is the same as this. And it looks very symmetrical. So you can go in and make some mod modifications to your model. You can try some cheap tricks where you just take all of these and you just rotate it on the Y 180. Now they're facing backwards. And that's not too bad. So, you know, do what you like. Try to get this working out. But as you can see, the wagon is taking shape nicely. Um, we will have uh, more pieces to adjust and manipulate, but in the end, I think it's going to work out. So you guys have all the um, tools necessary, I believe, to make this work. You know all the you have all the skills, so to speak. Um, everything's been presented. Uh, I guess there's one last thing, and I'll go ahead and cover that here as well, and that is assigning shaders. Um, so let's clean up our outline here a little bit here and kind of say, all right, we got our left, right, planks, wheels, groups, arches, all this geometry, we're going to group it, and we're just going to put it in the wagon geo I'm going to take all these curves and drop them into our miscellaneous. You know, the extra pieces too. Make sure miscellaneous is hidden. So we have our wagon group. I'm going to hide the uh, image plane, so I just drop them in the misc for the time being. And uh, it's nice to start to separate your geometry with shaders so that you can say, hey, this is wood. This is steel or so forth, right? We're lashing. So we have basically three main materials so far. So to break these materials um, and make them more, kind of visualize them, we're going to open up the hypershade, which is this little button right here with the uh, little ball there. And inside our hypershade, I'm going to delete these two. These were leftovers from before. By default, you just have a Lambert, a particle, and a shader glow. 
every scene has to have those and they will you can't delete them um, but a Lambert is a uh, pretty standard basic shader based on the guy who created it I believe called Lambert same thing with uh, we have a blend and those are the two we're gonna look at right now so let's make this a little more easy to see on this window I'm going to try and open up this hyper shade in a separate panel. So we go panel, two panes, let's do a split. And this one, I'm going to switch this panel to be a Where is our panel for the hypergraph editor? Hypershape, sorry. Alright, so pretty congested little area here. But it should work. So underneath Maya, we have the Maya tab inside of the hypershade, we have this blend and Lambert for two sort of surfaces. Um and I wanna bring I wanna bring a blend into the scene here. This same controls for moving around your viewport for the uh, hypershade. So there's a blend, and then we also, did I create a Lambert? Now let's create a Lambert. And there's a Lambert. So this is a new Lambert, other than our initial shading. So this is a Lambert, I'm gonna go ahead and select the color attribute. Let's assign like a, a brown. More like a woodish brown there and we're going to assign it to some geometry so to do that we can just middle mouse drag the Lambert onto the geo and it will take it or I can select all the geometry I want to have it right click and say assign material to viewport and there we go I can uh, do this a little quicker by grabbing the groups that these are in. So I can say, yeah, I want all of my planks. And inside my wheels, I want the uh, spokes. I'm using control. And the rims. And I'm going to shift control select. That will add to the selection. So control shift select those things, the arches. Right click. Assign material to viewport, and now they've all got that wood color. All right. Now that those are assigned, we're going to look at our blend. The nice thing about blend is it has what's called a specular shading. The specular shading is what kind of makes things view uh, appear more shiny. So without it, it's just a Lambert. That's really the big major difference. With the specular shading, you can see it turns and looks a little more. Uh, shiny, right? So here's our uh, our things that we want to be metal. These are going to be kind of iron pieces. So I'll just shift select those, right click and say add material to selection in viewport. And let's darken the color. Get a minute, there we go, darken the color. And now we get a nice kind of iron feel to that one. Maybe put a little color in that iron so it's not just pure gray. Let's put some cool blue feeling into it. Yeah, that feels nice. And the next thing we want is our lashing. So I accidentally changed our Lambert to that. So for our lashings, we can it's a cloth or maybe it's a leather or whatever it is. Is it shiny? Is it not? It's probably not so shiny, so I'm just going to use another Lambert. The color choice is going to be a lighter lashing color. Let's go like a dirty white. So I'll grab those lashing geometries and go right click, uh, add material to selection, and there we go. So now everything has, let's go ahead and just get out of the hyper shade for a second. 
and you see everything has a unique color which helps me visually sort of prepare for uh, surfacing and texturing. Um, makes me know like how many materials I'm going to need, uh, how I might want to organize my, my UVs when we get into that. So yeah, there's all just um, some uh, uh, last little preparatory state uh, to finishing your model. Um, so go ahead and do that. Give some shader assignment. Uh, don't worry too much about the ins and outs of a Blin and a Lambert. We'll be going much more into detail with those materials. Uh, but it is nice to sort of see what we've got here. Well, it's good. So, nice organized outliner. We've got some uh, shaders on our ge geometry. And uh, we'll see you guys in class.